Hi there. In the last video, we learned everything about the Stripe machine. Today, we'll be learning how to approach the RE framework. Well, to approach the RE framework, we have to understand the, the role of global variables. And let me explain you through the state machine and then we will go back into the RE framework and learn the learn everything about global variables in the RE framework. Now, global variables are variables that are available across the whole program, right? Well, in this case, the global variables that we have is input number and to continue. Now, these two variables are enough to define the state of this whole state machine right here. So example, now we have the input number. We put the value in the input number in the init state or the initial state and the, the value in the input number determines what should be the transition from the initial state. It could either be between 1 to 50, between 50 and 100 or out of range. I can show you. Here it is, the transition 1 to 50, if the input number is greater than 0 and if it is less than or equal to 50. Same way in here, if the number is greater than or equal to 51 or if it is less than or equal to 100 and likewise if it is out of range. The point I'm trying to make here is this one variable Controls the, controls the transition across initial state to number between 1 to 50, 51 to 100 or the final state. That means this variable is available across all the four states. Similarly, the to continue boolean variable which controls the transition from the number 1 to 50 or 51 to 100. The transition is controlled via the to continue variable it either goes into this state the exiting state or it goes back into the entering initial state right so this is the role of the global variable now let me take you to the re framework this is the re framework it has a state machine the general business process which has the states like the init state the get transaction data state process transaction state and the end process. This state machine also has global variables. All these variables that you see are global variables. All these variables are available across all the state machines. To begin with, let me give you an example of the config variable, which is of the type dictionary. This variable is initialized or it gets its values in the init state. It gets its value from the config file. Whatever you put in the config Excel file is read in the init state and the, the config dictionary variable is initialized there. Now, this config variable, the values that it holds, is available across all the state machines. Sorry, across all the other states. One example would be it is available in the process transaction like we, when we are in the process transaction, this process transaction state has access to all these variables, right? Within that, within the process transaction state, a process or a XAML file called process.xaml is invoked. Now, because this XAML file is invoked within the state, state process transaction, which has access to all these variables, the process XAML file can access some of the variables, some of the global variables. Whatever you pass as input can be accessed. In this case, it uses the transaction item and it utilizes the config variable. You have to pass this as an input to this file. Once you pass it, pass it as an input, when you when you are in the process XAML file, you can see these arguments here, right? The other set of variables that I would like to bring to your attention would be the transaction variables. These variables right here, the transaction item, 
field 2, field 1, transaction ID and transaction data table. All these variables gets, get their value in the get transaction data state. It gets it values uh, from this uh, get transaction data XAML file. And if you see the arguments, all the transaction item field 1, field 2, transaction ID get their value and the transaction data get their values from from the get transaction data XAML file. The only variable that doesn't get its value is the transaction number. The transaction number is given as an input to this file. That means this transaction number is controlled outside the get transaction state. Well, to tell you it is controlled in the process transaction state. Initially, the value of the get the transaction number is one. Then what happens is um, in the process transaction state, once uh, the I framework, let's say it initializes, it it uh, gets the transaction data, it processes it, it, and then after that, in the finally in here in the set transaction state, the transaction number value gets incremented depending on whether there was an error or not. If there's no no error, it will increment the value from one to two and so on. Well, if you see here, it the transaction number is passed as an input and then whatever value it had, let's say it had the value 10, then the value becomes plus one, it becomes 11, and then that value is outputted and then it is stored into the transaction number variable. So all the transaction uh, variables that you see are again controlled in here except the transaction number that is it the other two variables that we have are exception related variables one is system error one is business rule exception error uh, the system error is when there's an error for which your program has not been handled uh, you don't anticipate that error let's say an application doesn't open and there's an error you, the particular selectors um, the code is not able to find the particular selector it doesn't know how to handle that situation it throws an error right let's say we are in the process transaction state an error happens and then it will be stored here Stand system error is equal to that exception and based on that the transition happens if it's an error then it would go here system error is not nothing then it would go back to the init stage here if there's a business exception rule error that means uh, an error that you it's a business error let's say your uh, a value a variable should not have certain value and it gets that value and then you throw it as a business rule exception then business rule exception variable will not be nothing and then it will go back to in to get transaction data state it will get a new value and then you can start processing it finally the last variable that i want to talk about is the retry number this variable is used to check how many times a particular transaction item or a queue item can be retried before it is determined or uh, set to have been failed so basically all these global variables the values within these global variables determine the output or the transition from one state to the other that is how you have to approach the re framework thank you so that's about all the global variables that we have in the re framework hope you like it hope you understand what is the role of each and every variable if you have any other questions Please do let me know via the comments. Thank you.